Positivity. My name is Christine Barclay, and I'm the proud owner and artistic director of Barclay Performing Arts, which is the producing company bringing you this incredible production tonight. Um, this house speech, as all of our house speeches have been this year, is yet again just a little different than the other ones. So, uh, let me give you a brief backstory as to what we're even doing here right now. Um, we have a couple new accessories you may have noticed. This uh, awesome shield is one. We have some awesome new and fantastically done tape lines marked out on our stage. This is our theater. It looks a little different, maybe, than other theaters we've performed in past, but it is a theater nonetheless. And what we have done is we have taken what has always been our studio, and now we've flipped it into our performance venue. And I gotta say what you're about to witness here is going to be something very, very special. Um, when we picked to do the Theory of Relativity a year ago, as our, some one of our summer shows, we had absolutely no idea what the world was going to be right now, uh, in a lot of ways. And it's almost like we knew because there could not be a more perfect show for the world right now or to be bringing to you in your homes. Um, when you're feeling maybe a little bit alone, maybe a little bit scared, maybe that you don't understand the world around you or the role you're supposed to play in it. And I'm gonna here to tell you that you're not alone in that. Um, this musical was written about those exact themes. So when all of the different mandates and things are put in place that we're telling everybody in the world, especially every artist, every performer, Broadway, that they had to go dark, that we couldn't sing together and we couldn't tell stories and we had to keep our social distance and we had to put masks over our faces. Barclay, as we've been known to do, just decided to pick up and reinvent the wheel one more time here. So, with the theory of relativity, we started rehearsing this the um, first weekend in June. In the last five weeks, we have reblocked the show three separate times. The final time being on this previous Tuesday night that we just had, when we realized that there was absolutely no way that we were going to cancel the show, but we had to play by different rules. So we flipped it from being a proscenium production with inter human physical interaction and touching to a uh, socially distant movement and story time. And what you're about to see is a group of young teenagers who have been working tirelessly to keep their theater home alive. Barclay Performing Arts opened in 2016. This is our fifth anniversary summer. We have gone through an awful lot in the four and a half years that we've been open. But we made a promise and we released a mission statement that we are not just here to put on shows, we are here to be a safe space emotionally and physically for our children in our community and for the members of our community at any age. And so every time something gets thrown at us, a hurdle gets put in our way, we just have to sit and think, how do we get over this one? How do we reinvent? How do we create a new way of telling stories? How do we stay alive for everyone around us? So tonight is the very first of what we hope isn't, but maybe a new wave of storytelling and theater. And so if you are a supporter of the arts, if you believe in the next generation of children, if you like what you see, tonight is our gift to you. If any part of you wishes to maybe give back to us to make sure that we can continue to tell stories, we can make sure that we're creating safe, physical and emotional and mental safe things for our children and for our adults in our community to do through whatever is about to happen. You can, if you feel so inclined, click a little donate button on our website. And no gift, I promise you, no gift is too small. But we have never been the company that has written on asking for money at the top of our shows. 
So that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, you know how to find us. You know how to support us. And uh, we certainly would love it if you would. But let me just give a little bit of thanks back at you for what I've already received personally. I need to make a huge, huge statement about how beautiful it is that my music director, who's been with me since our pilot production in the summer of 2016, Mr. Ed Colts, is willing to sit here with us right now and play this show live, shield it up. He's willing to accompany us and stay physically with us in the space to support our children. Um, our incredible company manager, Jason Pierre, made the decision to lead by example, and he is performing live with the cast of The Theory of Relativity tonight to be able to add a huge onstage support to these kids doing something that has never been done anywhere in the world until right now. And the man behind the camera who you cannot see, obviously, the wonderful Mr. Ohm, who goes through any role, literally on or off stage, that is asked of him. And uh, I guess we will call him our booth technician for this show. No matter what has happened over the four and a half years of Barclay being open, we have risen above because of the beautiful family and community that we have been lucky enough to accumulate. Not even mentioning the bravery of the students who are about to perform for you. That should go without saying after you see them. So here's what I ask of you at home, sitting on your couch or wherever you are, maybe driving in your car, whatever you're doing, watching this, on whatever platform you're watching, we're bringing theater to you. So in a world where theater is slowly being shut down everywhere, we're gifting this to you. So I ask, turn off all of your cell phones and your devices, except for the one you're watching this on. Silence your notifications, unwrap your candy now, get your dinner set up on your tray in front of you now, so that you can sit and for an hour and 15 minutes, you can watch, you can love, you can appreciate, you can support, you can listen, you can cry, you can laugh. But please give yourself the gift of human connection and know that you may feel, as we say in the theory of relativity, that you are on a marble floating through space trying to figure out what the heck you're doing here but you're actually sitting right now with hundreds of other people. You just don't even know it. You're all sitting together right now, watching me talk, watching, we're about to watch these kids coming in, hearing Mr. Ed playing live. You are connected. You're in a theater. It's just a little different this time, but we are together and we are live. And this isn't pre-recorded. And this is the one time in this entire world that this show is gonna be done like this right now, right here, during this time. So please, give yourself the gift of setting up a theater, treating this like a theater, and remembering in your heart how important it is to keep the arts alive. And if we're working this hard, and these kids are working as hard as they're working, then please, Give yourself the benefit of receiving it because it's going to be something I don't think any of us will ever forget. So to give you a scoop and familiar to hear, if my friend Alice is watching, you didn't come here to hear me talk. You came here to watch the theory of relativity. And I present to you our evening teen program right now. Let's do it.
person B. A is walking towards B at a rate of 3 miles per hour, and B is walking towards A at a rate of 2 miles per hour. How fast does B perceive A to be walking? Newton's first law of motion. Every body in state of uniform motion will remain in that state of motion unless an external force is applied to it. How is the standard still on Earth? The Earth's parameter is 170,000 miles per hour.
Dr. O'Hara, I'm glad you could make it. I know, it's frustrating getting to Midtown at this time of day. Uptown and R is a pain. Not to mention the rain. But thank you for coming, sir. I've got something to say. <laughs> I'm allergic to cats. Well, that's part of the reason I have to have dinner with you. Oh, I'm allergic to cats. I know, it's only a life threatening medical problem. So, when I was born, they expected me later, so I spent two months with you, Baker. And ever since that, I can tell by your smirk. Do you think this is silly and borderline phobic, perhaps? Oh, but this medicine quirk could cause such a violent reaction my lungs could collapse. Oh, bear with me, sir. This is nothing sorted. Your patients, I promise.
circle to its diameter is known as pi. Pi equals 3.14. If I bring her water and her home, she will dance with me till dawn. If I bring her water and her home, I can hold her in my arms. If I bring her water and her Lesson A, he told me 
gravity of 18 and walks west against the rotation of the Earth at a rate of 3 miles per hour. If she continues to walk in a straight line, how old will she be when she returns home? Person B leaves home at a rate of can't get out of here fast enough. How massive a force will it take to change Person B's trajectory? Person C is standing still. If two equal but opposing forces are applied to Person C, one external and one internal,
comes up to Danny by first thing in the air. It's your way to cause the bathroom on your paper to each day. Your time job is a campus store cashier. And it's not only spring vacation, and it's cold, you go once more. It's hard to believe that's one time coming gone. You see that familiar driveway, and you open that front door. Okay. <laughs> 
your dance. I don't have a good name for a cake. Always like 
dropped your groceries. Like the sky, we both knew that something was going on. I prayed for a miracle. I cried myself dry. But six weeks later, Mama was gone. Instead of tears, my heart begins to stir. Cause she's the one who made me see that miracles exist. So I just smile and whisper this to her. I promise you this, Mom. I will make it through. Cause now I understand the miracle was you. I promise you this, Mom. I won't waste a single day. And my miracle will never fade away.
asking my friends I've got something to say. Just gather up, I promise later we'll play. I have to explain, things will not be the way that they've been. Things are changing for good, and it's time that I fill you all in. Up until now, it's been only us five, but I think we all knew that this day would arrive. He's offered his heart to me and everyone's eyes to suggest. I love him, but that doesn't mean I love you any less. You'll always be special to me. You'll always be my main obsession. Thank you. 
right. Sun Young, keep it simple, no French tips. I don't want to waste too much money on a blind date. Ow, sorry about those cuticles. I've been so stressed about this date, I've been chewing at them like a dog. I don't know, should I go? Should I not go? Don't give me that look. I know what you're thinking. Here she goes again, but this one's different. This one's a physics major. <laughs> or is it math? Well, it's something smart. I haven't told him what I do yet. You don't tell a physics major you're studying art history unless it's absolutely necessary. A physics major? Wow. I've been doing some research, Einstein and stuff. I want to be able to talk about something tonight. Ooh, let me practice on you. You be him, I'll be me. I think it's amazing that light travels at 186,000 miles per second, don't you? 
Did I sound smart? Oh yes, it's quite a paradox that the speed of light is constant despite the speed of the observer. I had to look that one up. Best I can figure it, let's say a truck is coming at us. And let's say I'm running away from the truck and you're running toward the truck. I'm not sure why you're running toward a speeding truck, but anyway, the truck will hit you before it hits me, right? Now let's say it's not a truck coming at us, but it's light at 186,000 miles per second. It should hit you first, right? Just like the truck. Wrong! It will hit both of us at the same time. I know, it doesn't make any sense, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff I'm going to be talking about tonight. Me, an arts history major, and him, a physics major. It's going to be a disaster. That's it, I'm not going. <coughs> oh, Sun Young, how do you stay so calm in the high pressure world of nail aesthetics? How does anyone stay calm? There's this guy in my class, we call him Mr. Golden Boy. He's got the most insane workload. He takes classes all day, and in his time off, he manages the campus bookstores. All of them. But he's completely zen about everything. And I had this friend when I was a kid, Mira. She had the worst life. Her dad was a deadbeat, drunk all the time. He left when she was like eight, but she was always happy. How do they do it? Maybe I should try that zen thing. You know, choose happy, create your own reality. Um, this will be fine. This thing will be fine. And if it sucks like all the others, this too shall pass. Um, and that felt good. You know what? I'm gonna go. <sighs> oh, Sun Young, you've got the best view. I could watch people from this window all day. Who are they? Where are they going? Where are they from? Screen to your holes, lemmings. Ooh, check out Miss Power here. I'm doing my lips on the street because I'm too busy. She's gonna run right into that guy. No, wait, he moved. Oh my god. <laughs> he just ran smack into her. Oh my god, she was not gonna move. It was either her or the post. Good choice, buddy. Good choice. <sighs> Choices. Oh, I don't know. Should I go or not? How do you know what you're gonna end up with? The last one showed all the signs of being something special. Great expectations, you know, until... You know where he took me on our first and only date? The Dairy Queen, at the mall, with the cranky girl behind the counter. You think working around sprinkles all day, you'd be happy. Pretty face, though. I told her that. First time I've seen her crack a smile. And it was like a tiny ray of sunshine in a very bleak evening. And remember Mike? I made him the most amazing dinner. Candlelight, nice music, oysters. I thought, this is the one. But then everything went south when I brought out dessert. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't like apple pie? And I guess I'm still getting over that a-hole Ricky from a few years back. How can someone make you feel so good and so bad at the same time? But it's the luck of the draw, Sun Young. You can't win if you don't buy a ticket. I would have sworn my friend Julie would end up old and alone and knitting cat sweaters. But she just told me over lunch that she's getting married. I'll send her to you to get her wedding nails done. I guess if Julie can find one, so can I. And this physicist seems like a good guy. I mean, he's taking me out for dinner and dancing. I told him, show up with a red rose so I know who you are. And he agreed. It's kind of old school romantic, don't you think? You talked me into it, Sun Young. I'm going. I'm going on a date with a physics major, and we're gonna have dinner, and we're gonna go dancing, and we're gonna talk about the constant nature of the speed of life. <laughs> did, did I say life? Oh, that's funny. The speed of life. Whether you're running from it or towards it, it hits you at the same time. <laughs> Well, honey, if that's the case, I might as well run straight at it. <laughs> Gone already? Time flies when you're having a nice conversation. Oh, Sunny, you are gorgeous. Thank you for everything. All right, wish me luck. 
Hey, maybe I should have got the French tips after all. Thank you. 